This episode of News Dump is brought to you by Masterclass. Uh-oh, it's the weekly entertainment news show, so we got to talk about entertainment news. So you know what that means. Someone tried to do something to Dave Chappelle on stage this week during a show at the Hollywood Bowl in Los Angeles as part of Netflix's citywide comedy festival. He could have killed him. Uh, the pearl clutchers were right all along. Will Smith has activated an untold amount of sleeper agents whose goal is to silence comedians through violent means if necessary. Through any means necessary. We were blind to this obvious problem. Cancel culture was leading this way this whole time, and you laughed. You yeah. laughed. Well, yeah, I mean, look, this is all Will Smith's fault. Uh, right when you thought the world had forgotten about the slap, a person who was clearly inspired by the event that took place at the Academy Awards rushed the stage at the Hollywood Bowl and tried to attack Dave Chappelle, except he just kind of unsuccessfully tackled the comedian uh, and then proceeded to get beaten so badly by an entourage of security and fellow comedians that he ended up looking like an action figure that was pulled apart and put back together incorrectly. Yeah. Just, the arm was backwards. Usually I'm pretty squeamish with uh, body parts doing things they're not supposed to do, but with this one, it was just so comical. Like... Like, yeah, his arm's not supposed to do that. No, it was uh, it was very weird looking. But we can't show it because that would be, like, against YouTube's yeah. terms of service. But I'm sure you've seen it by now. It's not gory. It's just the man's body is, uh, it's been rearranged. It's going bit. the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so that happened. Uh, another comedian was attacked on stage. But, so this one was odd for many reasons and apparently had nothing to do with Dave Chappelle's comedy at all, despite what had been initially assumed by many, including Dave Chappelle himself, on stage who joked uh, immediately after it happened that he was attacked by a trans man. Mm -hmm. Not so. But let's get into the details of what went down first. On Tuesday of this week, on the last of four days of Hollywood Bowl performances, Dave Chappelle was tackled by a person in attendance as the show was coming to a close. Chappelle recovered quickly while the attacker was detained and uh, just beaten very badly off stage, mm -hmm. resulting in various injuries, most notably a broken arm. Uh, the photo, it's really something to behold. We can't show it, but you've probably already seen it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's links in the description if you, you feel like checking it out. Yeah, the attacker was identified as 23-year-old Isaiah Lee, and uh, he was subsequently arrested by the LAPD, initially under the charge of felony assault with a deadly weapon, as Lee was in possession of the dumbest weapon we've ever seen. A fake handgun that's actually a knife. Yeah, he heard the, the old proverb, don't bring a, a knife to a gunfight, and he's like, why not both? Also, just like the least conspicuous, like, if I know I can't sneak a knife in, but I'm pretty sure I could sneak a gun in. Like, the the thing it's disguised as, as is technically worse than what it actually is. Yeah. I mean, I, get, I haven't been to the Hollywood Bowl in several years, but I don't remember their security being all that tight. But that's probably going to change now, which that sucks. It's going to take a long time. Because it already in. takes, uh, it's... I'd never go there because it's located in just the most inconvenient place possible. It's in a canyon. It's uh, there's like a, a two in lane between, road in, in between like the most the busiest freeway and yeah. uh, a large tourist destination. Yeah, it's so. uh, second only to like the Greek theater in Griffith Park as to just like why is this here? Yeah. Uh, also, it's a massive venue. So when you're thinking about this, there's tens of thousands of people there for this. Yeah, performance. it seems like a pretty bad place to watch comedy if you're asking. Me. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, if you're sitting up in the cheap seats. Yeah. Dave Chappelle's just like a dot. Anyway, yeah. yeah. So that that gun, some real mall ninja shit. Just uh, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. uh, so in the wake of this bizarre attack, social and traditional media were whipped into a frenzy over why this happened, with a majority of people running with the idea that this person was targeting Dave Chappelle specifically because of his recent uh, material mm -hmm. or. Maybe it was an attack on comedy in general, which spills over into more arguments about how this was an attack on free speech. First, they came for the comedians, and I said nothing because I was not a comedian. But then they came for the YouTubers, Down, and there was no one left to cry for me. And, and look, it might have been something deeper than the attacker uh, eventually claimed. It, it, I don't know. It turns out Dave Spell actually requested to speak with the 23-year-old before he was hauled off to jail uh, to sort of get his side of the story. Why did you do that? Yeah, that was odd. So here's the Hollywood Reporter. Chappelle described convincing venue security to allow him to enter the room where his alleged assailant, 23-year-old Isaiah Lee, was being held. I needed to talk to him, Chappelle said. He asked Lee what possibly could have prompted his attack, to which Lee, who Chappelle said appeared to him to be mentally ill, offered a story about his grandmother from Brooklyn who had been forced out of her neighborhood by gentrification. 
The attack was meant to draw attention to her plight, Chappelle recounted. Yeah, that sounds like some uh, some mental illness. You are connecting two dots that really have... There's just no real connection there. On opposite sides of the country... I know what I'll do. I'll fly to Los Angeles and I will tackle Dave Chappelle. That will, that will do something about my grandmother getting priced out of her apartment by hipsters. Yeah, certainly people won't look at this and say, what? Huh? That's the reason? Yeah. That doesn't do anything to... I mean, we're all aware that this is a problem, but like... Yeah. The, this course of action seems strange. Uh, yeah, we're not saying that there wasn't more to it than that, but that's what this guy told Chappelle to his face. Uh, in addition to the gentrification remarks, the other premonition of this attack came from a song that Lee released in 2020, which was literally titled Dave Chappelle and featured the lyrics, walking straight into the bowl. Um, it's not exactly walking straight into the Hollywood bowl, but he says walking into the bowl. Um, was this guy, I, I don't know if this was a canceled appearance that was rescheduled as part of the Netflix Fest, um, or if there's any actual connection to this at all. It's just strange that this person did have a song called Dave Chappelle. Hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, regarding any kind of hint that this attack was related to Chappelle's material about the LGBTQ community, uh, it seems doubtful, considering Lee also had songs that praised former President Donald Trump. Um, so while there certainly could be more going on here, this seems like it was done for one reason. Attention. I love, you know, everyone likes to, uh, you know, uh, lazy boy quarterback anytime there's a violent event that takes place. It's like, all these liberals, these trans liberals coming out to teach me. It's like, no, uh, actually, this guy's just full on MAGA. And uh, sometimes people are just mentally ill and they do, they do things. But yeah, I think it was it, it, uh, ironic, I guess, because we were talking about after the Chris Rock, Will Smith thing, where it's just like, yeah, this wouldn't happen to Dave Chappelle because he's actually fucking built. And yeah, strong. I, mean, I don't even think and he, he like stumbled thing. a little yeah, bit. Yeah, in the video, which you can't show. The guy might as well have tackled a brick wall. Yeah, it was like he ran into this like immovable object. Yeah. And that's exactly what you would assume would have happened with Dave Chappelle. Uh, it was a bit odd to see many celebrities uh, being like, yeah, I stomped the shit out of that guy. Like just admitting yeah. that they beat someone up backstage, which um, could result in a lawsuit from this person. It's a little weird. Yeah. yeah it's... it's <laughs> Similarly, uh, someone like drop kicked Arnold Schwarzenegger on like a red carpet. This was years ago, mm -hmm. and he oh, just, he's like in the middle of an interview and like doesn't even flinch. He just like and like afterwards he's like, oh, I thought someone just bumped into me. Yeah, <laughs> this guy yeah. like running full speed drop kicks Arnold and he just doesn't even feel it. Yeah, very funny. Um, but uh, we should probably reiterate here: um, attacking people is bad. Yes, violence is bad. Yes, do not attack people physically. It's almost certainly not going to help your cause, whatever that may be. Mm. It's just going to make you look crazy. Because you're acting kind of crazy. Yeah. And this could have been a lot worse. I mean, honestly, regardless of how stupid the guy's weapon looked, it was a knife. It could have seriously hurt someone if he'd used it, which he reportedly didn't. And if it had been an actual gun, or maybe a knife, a gun shaped like a knife, yes. that could have been even worse. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, his charges were later downgraded to misdemeanor charges, which included battery, possession of a weapon with intent to assault, and unauthorized access to a stage, which is a lot easier for the prosecutors to prove and an easier case to win than going after a felony assault with a deadly weapon charge because the attacker, reportedly, wasn't actively using the weapon during the attack. So feel free to argue over that in the comments, but that's how the lawyers, including the L.A. City attorney, uh, assume is the easiest case to win. Uh, Fox News and uh, Newsmax, they are losing their minds about our, our commie... Uh, Gascon? Uh, yeah, George Gascon trying to turn L.A. into Venezuela, but, like, yeah, it's he, he's not... He's not pulling felony charges because he's got a much more airtight case with the misdemeanor. It'd be charges. a lot harder to prove that it was an yeah. uh, attack with a deadly weapon because it, apparently, th this varies by, on reports. Attack but like, with He had it like weapon. in his backpack or something like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm sure like some prosecutor somewhere would happily go for that, but uh, it's, it's a case that you'd like to win. It's not as airtight of a case as mm -hmm. uh, you would want. So. Not diminishing this at all. It's fucked up that this happened, by the way. Yeah, it shouldn't have happened. Uh, yeah. But Isaiah, Isaiah Lee has, as of Friday, pleaded not guilty. So uh, we'll see where this goes. But there's your Dave Chappelle update. And as for Will Smith and Chris Rock, you're probably already aware of this by now, but Chris Rock was there and participating in the Chappelle event and uh, made a comment shortly after about how he thought it, uh, it might have been Will Smith rushing the stage again. Um, then he, at a follow-up secret show at LA's Comedy Store on Thursday, uh, they spoke of the attack again with Chappelle saying, uh, at least you got smacked by someone of repute. 
I got smacked by a homeless guy with leaves in his hair. And Chris Rock responding, I got smacked by the softest blank that ever rapped, referring to Will Smith. Uh, but of course, this is not the last that we've heard from either of them because it was just announced that Will Smith will be the first guest on the new season of David Letterman's celebrity interview series on Netflix. But if you're looking for more inside information about the slap and the fallout, um, this awkwardly timed episode was actually filmed before the Academy Awards ceremony. So while it will be a weird segment to watch at this point, there won't be much to learn from it. So it's like it's recorded just below. Dave's like, oh, so what do you got? Uh, you got anything planned? He's like, oh, well, I'm planning on uh, slapping Chris Rock in the face at the Oscars. He's like, are you serious? Yeah. When's this air? Uh, like six months. All right. Well, I guess it'll have happened by it then. It is. It's weird and it's <laughs> strange and it's kind of fascinating that a pivotal moment, arguably the most pivotal moment in this actor's uh, life, both him receiving an Academy Award after years of trying and also potentially ruining his career at the same exact moment. Yeah, it's pretty um, wild. Will not like has no bearing on this interview at all because yeah. it was recorded before it. But well, coming out after, actor, Will Smith. <laughs> yeah, like it's going to be. Everyone loves Will Smith. <laughs> what a so clean... what's it like being the most likable guy yeah. in Hollywood? Like it's just weird. I don't know if he's still uh, doing it, but he last I checked, he was he was in India, like studying meditation oh, of course. or yeah, some yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was posting pictures of him like in front of the Taj Mahal, like uh, sitting. Yeah, or I, they, he's doing the reputation repair yeah. ceremony. He's doing like, but I, I love it. it's like the whole go to India thing is is uh, it's like it feels very outdated. That's like That's what the Beatles did. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like Eat Pray Love like closed the book on like India is where Americans go to like get their head right. I think I feel like went, there's probably uh, something better than that. She went to uh, Indonesia, I believe. Did she? Well, I think she went all around. But uh, yeah, I think the book uh, there's a lot of uh, it's Bali. Oh, mm -hmm. I just read a very interesting book on Indonesia that would makes me feel very judgmental towards anyone visiting there for tourism. But uh, oops, yeah. I went years ago, oh, didn't well. know. I you was were ignorant. probably uh, your, the resort you were on in Bali. If it was on a beach, probably had it was not a beach. Okay, yeah. Every beach resort in Bali has just like like tens of thousands of bodies like buried underneath it. It's bad. Uh, the Jakarta method. It's a good book. It's uh, it's the Australian tourist destination. So uh, oi, yeah. But anyway, let's brush off the uh, filthy feeling of bad dumb news for a second and uh, dive once more into Ricky's feel good, happy news, fun time segment. Yeah. OK. Last week we talked about a very cool discovery on Mars. And this week we're going to talk about a very cool discovery here on planet Earth, specifically located here in these United States of America. Researchers have found Native American cave drawings in northern Alabama that they say are around a thousand years old and feature renditions of human figures birds, insects, and even an 11-foot carving of a rattlesnake alongside some letters that appear to form the phrase Roll Tide. Obviously, the last part's a joke, but the rest is very real. Were rattlesnakes 11 feet long back then? No, they just made it, they blew it up for a dramatic effect. I hope so. That is horrifying. They got snakes out here this big. A rattlesnake the size of an anaconda? It shakes that rattle and like it's base. You feel it. <laughs> yeah. It shakes the earth. Ooh, what the hell is that? So anyway, all these etchings are naturally preserved thanks to the cave's cool, damp air, and they've survived modern discovery because of the cave being on now private land. Mm -hmm. The actual location of the cave is now being kept secret because, uh, well, this is America, and it would be instantaneously ruined by a bunch of assholes or looky-loos. Yeah. Here's Smithsonian Magazine with more on this discovery. Hundreds of images are etched into mud across roughly 4,300 square feet of the cave ceiling. Abstract shapes and swirling lines appear alongside rattlesnakes, bears, insects, birds, and human-like figures created by Native American artists under the flickering light of river cane torches sometime between 660 and 949 CE. The artwork continues well into the cave's dark zone where visitors can only see a hand in front of their face with the assistance of artificial light. Tens of thousands of Native American rock paintings known as pictographs and carvings, petroglyphs, adorn boulders and canyon walls across North America. But archeologists have only recently identified artworks in the dark zones of the continent's caves. They now know of about 100 art-filled chambers in the vast limestone cave system of the Southeast. So the locations of various caves that were reported to have ancient etchings in them came to researchers in the 1990s through online forums uh, dedicated to caving. And an archeologist at the University of Tennessee named Jan Simic originally located this cave, literally named 19th Unnamed Cave, back in 1999. 
although back then she was only able to provide descriptions of what she'd found, uh, and a photographer from National Geographic that joined her on the trip wasn't even able to photograph it properly uh, because of the low angles. So the photos were essentially useless. Hmm. Fast forward two decades, and we now have the technology. The team returned to the cave to create a 3D model of the site with photogrammetry, a technique in which thousands of high-resolution photos are stitched together. Finally, the researchers could examine the ceiling as if the cave had no floor. Simek intended to use the models to measure the distances between the glyphs and assess their relationship to each other, but in the 3D images, new mud glyphs emerge. Four human-like figures in intricately patterned clothing, the largest of which measures nearly seven feet in length, and the giant snake, whose pattern suggests it's a diamondback, an animal sacred to indigenous groups of the southeast. The article, as well as the video and more photos of the cave, are linked down in the description below so you can learn more. But this is really cool, and uh, in Alabama, of all places. Yeah! Take that, you coastal elites. Yeah, we do have culture after all. Yeah. Anyways, before we... It's a thousand years old, two thousand years old, but we have it. Yeah, something to be proud of. Uh, so anyway, before we get into the rest of the news from this week, let's take a second to thank today's sponsor, Masterclass. Masterclass gives you the extra knowledge and motivation that you need to take your craft, whatever it may be, to the next level. That's where Masterclass shines, because you're getting information from literally the best people in the business, from a variety of fields like cooking, music, film, animation, business, tech, and plenty more. With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn the art of DJing and music curation from Questlove, improve your cooking skills from Gordon Ramsay, or learn game design and theory from Will Wright. With over 100 classes from a range of world-class instructors, the thing you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. As I've said before, I get a lot of uh, fun out of watching uh, the cooking demonstrations, and you learn more about uh, some of the finer things that go into it, like plating, which I immediately destroy because I'm very hungry, but it looks nice for a second. Uh, so there's a lot of interesting stuff on there. I mean, we've talked recently about uh, if you want to learn about documentary filmmaking, who better than Ken Burns to teach you? Yeah. Uh, if you want to learn about having the winning mindset, F1's Lewis Hamilton. Uh, these cinema quality classes give you unparalleled access to literal experts, and the lessons range from showing you how to execute a technique to insights about that craft. You can explore lessons in any order across your phone, tablet, Apple TV, or computer, and at just 10 to 15 minutes, you can squeeze a few lessons in here or there without setting aside an entire day. They also offer downloadable lesson recaps and high-end supplemental materials to help you in your journey. Uh, now, if you're interested, we definitely think that you should check this out. Get unlimited access to every masterclass, and right now, our viewers, that's you, can get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash newsdump today. That is masterclass.com slash newsdump for 15% off masterclass. Terms do apply. All right, back to the news now, uh, because we got another nationwide manhunt on our hands because of a love affair between a corrections officer and a prisoner who are now on the run from the law. And sorry, Alabama, I know we just gave you credit for those cave drawings, but this prison escape happened in Alabama, so we're... Taking that gold star back. Yeah. I'm just going to save this for when you're good again. Uh, here's the short version of what's going on. So earlier this week, a corrections officer named Vicki White <laughs> claimed that she was transporting an inmate named Casey White to the county courthouse, but neither of them have been seen since. Yeah, and despite their last names being the same, they apparently are not related. But they do appear to have been in some sort of romantic relationship. It's so hot. It's like we're having incest, but... Uh... Well, I mean, not. it being Alabama and all, it wouldn't be that surprising <laughs> if uh, these whites were actually related and having sex. Uh, here's CNN with more. Vicki White said she was taking Casey White, not related, for a mental health evaluation when she checked him out of the jail. She said she was going to get medical care after dropping the inmate off at the courthouse because she wasn't feeling well. Authorities found out later no such evaluation or any court hearing was scheduled for Casey White that day, and Vicki White never made it to the place where she was going to get medical attention, according to Singleton. That afternoon, concerned officers at the jail tried to reach Vicki White, but her phone went straight to voicemail. It was then that they found out Casey White had not been returned to the jail. How does this happen? Uh, people just trusting each other. <laughs> I guess so. Oh, you're taking this prisoner to the courthouse. All right. And you just filed your retirement paperwork weeks ago and sold your house? Anyways, well, we'll come see on you later. back now. We'll see you later tonight. Yeah, so the, the report says that the two are believed to have met at the county jail in 2020 when Casey White was brought there for an arraignment after he confessed to a 2015 murder. He ended up getting transferred back to state prison, but the two kept in touch. And what's wild about this is how meticulously it seems to be planned, with no one else picking up on anything suspicious. Uh, Vicki White was with the department for two decades, but just before the prison break, she submitted her retirement paperwork. 
she sold her house and she bought a new vehicle that would be the one that was used for the escape. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> seems like this was planned and that her and the suspect escaped together, uh, though this guy is an admitted murderer. So it's also easy to assume that the corrections officer uh, might have been manipulated and uh, might be in some degree of danger or dead. Or having the love affair of her life on the beaches of Destin, Florida. Yeah. I always wanted to see Destin. Yeah. Florabama Shore or whatever they call it. Uh, anyways, have no fear, though, because what's that? Is that Dog the Bounty Hunter's music? Oh, he's back. Yes, fresh off his successful capture of Brian Laundry. He did it. In, in Florida, Dog the Bounty Hunter has appeared from the shadows once again, offering up tips to local police departments and federal investigators on how to bring this hot new couple to justice. And while he doesn't yet have his leather or snakeskin boots on the ground, uh, if this goes on any longer, we're safe to assume that he will be making an appearance or at least flying a plane over Alabama with a banner that lets the couple know that everyone's looking for him. <laughs> ah, we should probably leave this area because uh, Dog about yeah. is flying a plane <laughs> Thanks, over Thanks, Dog. Uh, appearing on news coverage of the escape and the manhunt, Dog Chapman gave the police, Mr. The, Policeman, Mr. Police. <laughs> he gave them all the clues, <laughs> saying, when you have a criminal like that and a police officer on the run, Neither one have experience with running. And then he recommended scouring Airbnbs and other rental properties in a 3,000 mile radius to find out who has made long-term bookings. They probably rented an Airbnb for maybe 90 days because she'll know, being a police officer, you have to go under right now. Things are going to calm down and cool off. I feel like that would be easy to track though. Didn't uh, Airbnb probably yeah, has records has a credit of- credit uh, card? Yeah, exactly, that has to be tied down. I would down. assume that if she planned everything else so carefully they would be uh running off of cash money in uh and not <laughs> a place that you need to book with an app that's yeah connected to your probably identity. a roadside hot motel somewhere yeah. instead of an airbnb also i just love the like the just say every airbnb in the united states of america a three thousand mile, mile radius. radius and canada maybe a little bit of mexico they could be anywhere they could be in cuba i guess yeah just like that brian laundry so uh yeah dog mr dog yeah Re reiterated that they are most likely hiding out somewhere because uh, get this here's a here's an expert uh, little little fact here for you uh, <laughs> I guess the suspect Casey White is six foot nine inches tall so pretty conspicuous you would have to assume they are hiding yeah it's safe to say they're they're not out and about they're hey, not in the honeymoon phase. Look at that six foot nine gentleman with all those Nazi tattoos. But they said the same thing about Osama bin Laden and it still took them like better part of a decade to find him mm -hmm. how hard could it be to find a seven foot tall arab a lot harder than you think well now they have to find a seven foot tall maniac in alabama which i don't know uh, the average height height of people in alabama uh, but i'm assuming they all they they probably a lot of them do have the uh the rebel flag tattooed on like this guy does yeah and uh, i believe he has an ss tattoo as well so be on the lookout for that mm, wow what a yeah, I mean, but yes, it is safe to assume that they are probably hiding because uh, his massive stature would instantaneously give this couple away. Uh, hopefully they are apprehended soon because, quick reminder, this guy is a murderer. And a white supremacist. Yes. But I'm sure when he's with her, he's he's just a... He's a he's, you don't angel. understand. He's he, a changed he's man. He's a changed man. Prison yeah. changed him. I changed him. I can fix him. <sighs> Anyway, while we're on the true crime kick, we do have another update to a story we covered earlier this week uh, regarding the evaporation of Lake Mead outside of Las Vegas, Nevada, and how that drought is uncovering some pretty morbid discoveries as it worsens. Who, you know, Las Vegas, you go there, you take the kids to Cirque du Soleil, you maybe play some craps. Las Vegas was uh, one of the most violent uh, crime infested places. Now it's in like, the uh, hey, do you want to go to the aquarium or go in the uh, water slide that goes through a shark tank? It's family fun yeah. here in Las Vegas. I always get like going to Las Vegas and seeing people wheel around strollers uh, is a real big bummer. I feel bad uh, for those kids because it's a it's a not a it's not a town for children as much as they want to market it as such. They it's tried not... briefly in the '90s to be like Vegas is for families now, and then uh, that apparently didn't work very well for their marketing. So they immediately pivoted to what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Well, it, also there's 
they're trying to get the parents there to gamble, but there's less money in bringing families there and just doing family things because the entire point is to get people into the casinos and get money out of them. Yeah. But you uh, can't bring your little kids into the casino unless the other like reason it's bad is because people are strolling kids on the street where uh, it's 120 in the air and in the the heat coming directly off of the sidewalks there, it's like 150. It's not great. No. So anyway, back to those uh, those bodies in Lake Mead. Yeah. Uh, last weekend, people stumbled across a barrel, and it had human remains inside of it. And uh, that barrel was stuck in that mud along the shoreline of Lake Mead. But decades ago, when the body was dumped, that area was reported to be dozens of feet underwater. Mm -hmm. Climate change. At least it's helping us find the Solve bodies. Solve cold cases. So, yeah, now it's looking like the body may have been dumped even further back than the 80s, according to investigators. And they also apparently know how the person was killed. Here's the latest from local outlet KLAS. The person found dead in a barrel alongside the shore at Lake Mead had been shot, and their death may date back to earlier than previously thought, police said Tuesday. The person, believed to be a man, is suspected to have been murdered in the late 1970s or 1980s, investigators said. The victim's clothes and shoes were sold at Kmart in the mid to late 70s, Metro Police Homicide Lieutenant Ray Spencer said. This uh, latest morbid discovery has now spawned what is essentially a, a big old treasure hunt uh, over in Lake Mead. Uh, with two retired Las Vegas police officers offering cash rewards for anyone who can find more bodies dumped in the lake. So this is fun. This is my kind of Easter egg hunt. Yeah, a new reason to go to Vegas. Yeah. You might lose it on the craps tables, but if you do, you just rent some scuba gear, or not, you just go comb the fucking shoreline and try to find a body. Yeah. And if you do, you get like $5,000. Hey, and you can take that right down to the casinos and lose it again. Lose all of it. Yeah, but at least you're not dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's Fox 5 Vegas with more on the uh, the fun treasure hunt. Retired officers David Kohlmeyer and Daniel Miner of the Problem Solver Show in Las Vegas are offering a $5,000 reward to divers who find any remaining bodies from Lake Mead. We do believe there are others out there, Kohlmeyer said. We believe there are cold cases that are out there or missing people in general. Since the water is so low right now, there's a chance in history to recover bodies. So yeah, they, they do specifically mention they are looking for professional scuba certified divers here, not just some weekend warriors who want to throw on a snorkel and go swimming around body infested waters. Yeah, it makes it uh, kind of unappealing to go enjoy a weekend of boating and swimming and water skiing on Lake Mead. I, is it even open for that stuff? Is there is I think it the, deep well, enough? <laughs> I think the it was boaters and someone on the shore that found oh. like the thing. So yeah, I, I'm sure it's fine. Although you got to like drag your boat a mile from the original shoreline to get it into the water, but... Yeah. Because they remember they keep, they said they had to keep extending the docks? Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, all over the western U.S. I mean, you go up to, like, Big Bear or Lake Arrowhead. There's a, it's it's It sucks, but it's also these people, you know, most of them... They they were rich. They got it. They put good money down on a lakeside home where oh like, yeah we walk right out and now it's like a hundred yards. Yeah, from... there's like uh like they have like the metal boat ramps that are just yeah. sitting on dirt now. Like, there's a few in Big Bear where like clearly like it was designed so like the boat is right outside your living room like you were yeah just right there and now it's, it's even much on not. the way there that boulder area that used to be like a small little water inlet with the cool looking boulders in it. Uh, last time I went, it was. It was the boulders, and that was pretty much it, which is uh, sad. Um, it's very sad. It's all very sad. Yeah. Anyways, finally, in another update to a month's old story at this point, uh, got to be years, years at this point, old, yeah. Fortnite is back on the iPhone. Dab. Sort of. Uh, in a weird yet uh, seemingly obvious workaround, Fortnite is playable on the iPhone once again thanks to the Xbox and its cloud gaming platform. Uh, here's Ars Technica with more. In an about face, Epic Games has made Fortnite available on Microsoft's Xbox Cloud Gaming streaming service. Among other things, that means the massively popular game is officially available to play on the iPhone again for the first time since it was pulled in the midst of a recent legal battle between Epic and Apple. A post on Microsoft's Xbox blog specifies that all you need to play Fortnite on just about any device with a screen is a Microsoft account, internet access, and the device. And they continue adding, the company's cloud gaming service is normally restricted to paying Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscribers, but Fortnite is receiving an exception and works in any web browser with nothing more than a free Xbox login. Microsoft writes that it plans to introduce more free-to-play cloud games that don't require paid Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscriptions in the future. At least part of Microsoft's hope here is likely that long disaffected iPhone Fortnite players will sign in to play the game on their phones, see how well it works, and then sign up for the full service to access premium games too. Which is smart on Microsoft's part because they get 
people to actually try out this service because yeah. uh, it it does work fairly well. Although you kind of got to get a control. It, it it's I know people play Fortnite on phones anyway, but it is weird to play games with just your fingers. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it actually works well. I guess the problem would be trying to get people to commit to trying it. So this is a good kind of tantalizing thing. Oh, also, I didn't add it, but uh, uh, Adam Conover's new show just had their trailer premiere on Netflix, The oh, G nice. Word. It's, uh, if, you, if you enjoyed Adam Ruins Everything, it's uh, sort of in that same vein, but explaining uh, everything about the government, how it works, and uh, it, it looks great. Uh, the trailer just dropped on Netflix, and I think it's coming out later this month. Good. He's uh, he's uh, he's a, one of the most tragic victims of the ATT WB deal. Yeah. Uh, Adam ruins everything. Fantastic show. Um, and probably, highly rated on the network yeah, too. Yeah, probably could have continued for years, but AT and T bought Warner Brothers, and as part of that, they acquired True TV, and they're just like, I don't know, it's not as profitable as we want. Get rid of it. And they're like, what? It's our it's our number one show. They're like. All right, well, maybe we'll just get no, rid no, of the no. whole channel. Impractical Jokers, Elliot. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, now, now True TV is just Impractical Jokers 24-7. Yeah, it's like how MTV's just yeah. ridiculousness for 24 so hours it's, a day. So uh, I, was, I was hoping hoping for the news that he Adam Conover had gotten a, a new project. I'm, I'm glad to hear that it's happening. Yeah. What's it, what's it going to be on? Netflix, I said. Okay. Yeah. Good. And, and I mean, luckily, they finished production yeah, just, before. Uh, just under the wire. I know. Because if this Christ. had started production any later, it might have been on the chopping block. Yep. Um, anyways, oh my God, can you believe it? We are almost at $20,000 raised for abortion fund access. That's crazy. It's honestly, again, humbled by your support of this amazing cause. Uh, let's get it to 20,000. We're yeah. just a few uh, bucks shy. So let's see if we can push it to 20,000. Uh, we set it for a week, so you have a couple days to do it. Um, thank you to anyone who's donated. We really appreciate it. The donation police are here. You can hear them in the background or not because everyone's like, dun, dun, dun. give well, us the donations. Whenever we mention that there's a, a fire truck going by, everyone's like, no idea what you're talking about. Can't hear it. Uh, if you have any extra money left over and want to, we didn't promote this last two episodes because obviously the donations to abortion access are much more important, but we are currently running a huge discount on our merch store to get rid of a uh, old stock. It's 30% off. Links in the description. In the meantime, please watch our two most recent videos. The death of NFTs is being celebrated worldwide. Uh, and uh, our video from earlier this week, check both of those out. Leave a like, leave a comment. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. And we'll see you soon for some weird news. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.